Let's talk silver plating. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take any of your copper work and plate it with silver. How to turn this into this. When you have plating loss, you can repair it by using one of the methods I'm going to describe. So let's talk about products. You would very much benefit from having an ultrasonic cleaner. This is mine. Uh, they come in many different sizes, uh, many different capacities. The product I use in my ultrasonic is the Teva Clean and it's from the same company that is making the electroplating solution that I will be demonstrating. We're also going to be using silvering powder. This is a product that we carry on our website. You're going to need some water for rinsing, paper towels. We're going to need some cotton balls or cotton applicator pads. This is a piece of 999 silver and a stainless steel piece of flatware. We also have some steel wool. You will need a mask and gloves. You'll also need the adapter that I show you how to make, a glass bowl to do the um, liquid electroplating in, and I think that's everything. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're going to be working with some chemicals here, so it's always a good idea, or it's really, it really should be a requirement for you to use a mask and rubber gloves. The uh, silver electroplating solution does contain cyanide, so it is not something you want to breathe in or have skin contact with. It's also good to work in a well-ventilated area. So we're going to start out doing the, uh, the liquid. Now, how the liquid is, is good for one thing and the powder is good for another uh, really comes down to what you're plating. So for example, this bracelet here is very complicated, lots of turns and twists, being able to rub a plating solution onto this would not be effective because it's not going to get all of the areas plated down on the inside. So we're going to use an immersion method to plate pieces that are more complicated or pieces that have uh, deeper uh, patterns, for example. For something that is flatter, that doesn't have a lot of ins and outs and, and recesses and deep grooves, we're going to use a, uh, an application where you're going to rub the plating onto the surface. So we're going to take a copper coin and we're going to plate it with silver. So as I said in the beginning, this is great uh, especially for silver, uh, silverware jewelry artists who run into the issue of plating loss. So, the, uh, the adapter that um, I show you how to make, you're going to go ahead and plug that in. Now, in this case, you really can't tell which is the negative and which is the positive. Uh, when you Put your clips on, you'll be able to tell real quick and I'll show you how you're gonna be able to determine which is positive and which is negative. Once you've done that, you're gonna find that your clips look very different. One's gonna have plating on it and so you know that's going to be your positive. The one that is darker is going to be your negative. So before we plug that in, we're going to use our uh, electroplating solution here. And in this case, I'm using a glass bowl. I'm going to put some of that in there. And we're going to plate this copper bracelet here. So you want to 
attach your positive lead to your piece and you want to attach your negative lead to your piece of fine silver. Now, if you don't have a piece of fine silver, uh, and actually these are, very, these are very easy to get. If you go to any local coin dealer or even online, you can purchase a piece of fine silver. In a pinch, if you do not have fine silver, you can use a piece of stainless steel. This is what's called your anode. So you're going to need either a piece of silver or a piece of stainless steel. Silver is preferred. And the reason is the solution has silver in it. There is silver uh, particles suspended in the solution. The anode will feed additional particles into the solution. So it basically recharges the solution and allows you to use the solution for a much longer period of time. If you use stainless steel as your anode, you don't have uh, silver feeding into the solution. So your solution is not going to last as long. So you can always start out using stainless steel and then move up to silver when you get yourself a piece of silver. Don't use sterling because it contains uh, copper and your plating process, your plating results aren't going to be as good as if you use fine silver. So you want a coin that is 999 silver. Okay. So we've got our negative and our positive here. I'm going to put that in the bowl and I'm going to attach, I'm going to grab a piece of tape here because my bowl is slanted. My piece wants to just slide down to the bottom. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape there to keep that in. It's best to not have the clip in the solution because this is a caustic solution. All it does is eat away at the clip and then you'll end up replacing the clip uh, more frequently. And the clips will have to be replaced over time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And now I'm going to immerse. I'm actually gonna stick this in the middle, being that my container is not very big. And you can see almost instantly how the silver starts. Okay, the longer you leave this in solution, the thicker the plating's going to be. And it's really something you want to play with. Uh, there's, there's really no hard and fast rule as to how long to leave your piece in solution. If you want a decent amount of plating, I would say you're going to want to uh, leave your piece in solution for an hour. Um, but you can get, overall, you're going to get a thin layer of plating. This is not commercial plating, and it is a very thin layer. So both, both methods that I'm going to show you do produce thin layers. And like I said, the longer you leave it in, the more you're going to get. Now, something you're going to have to do is move the clip. And that's because what's underneath the clip is not going to get plated. Something else to keep in mind is where, where your anode, your silver piece, is closest to the piece that you're plating, it's going to attach the silver there more readily because they're in such close proximity. So you do want to get that rotated around to make sure you get a nice even plating. Uh, and I'm sure you can see how nicely that's plating. So while that's plating, I'm going to set that aside. While that's plating, I'm going to show you the method for applying silver plating by rubbing it on. This is silver and powder, and it, it uh, contains silver nitrate. Uh, one of the ingredients is silver nitrate. And this is really, this is really a fascinating uh, process. 
And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of it out onto the, the cap here. Close that back up. You do, because these are in brown jars purposely because you need to keep them in a darker environment and a cool, dry environment. Uh, the brightening powder, that's the second step. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put a little bit on the lid there. Well, I put a little bit more than a little bit. So that should just dump that back in there. I'll just use it right directly off of the, off of my surface here. So you don't wanna get these mixed up. Paper towel. Clean up a little bit there. I'm gonna rotate my piece in solution. And something that's very important before you begin plating is having your pieces to be super clean. And that is uh, scrubbing everything down. Dawn dish soap is always uh, a very good thing to scrub everything down with. And then you want to uh, wipe it all down with alcohol or acetone. Uh, ultrasonic cleaner is really good, especially for pieces that have a lot of ins and outs because it's gonna get the dirt out from the inside, things that you really can't reach on your own. So how you apply the silvering powder is, I'm gonna grab a couple of these little cotton pads here. You wanna get your cotton pads damp, not soaked, but damp, and dip that into your powder. And you just wanna rub the surface. Let me hold that up to the camera so you can see that better. And as you rub the surface, what happens is the ions in the silver replace the ions of the copper. And you can see how that's turning silver quite quickly. Add just a little bit more water there. And we have a, a little bit uh, uh, raised areas there, so I'm just going to press down a little bit. I'm going to get grab myself just a little more silvering powder here. It doesn't take much. A little more water. So you just want to keep rubbing it around until everything is silver. Okay, the next step is going to be the brightening powder. So you'll see that it's silver, but it's really not got any bright shine to it. Well, that's where the brightening powder comes in. This really brings the more white tone of silver out. A little more water. Okay, so once everything is applied, you're just gonna rinse that off. And dry that with a paper towel. And then I'm gonna use my favorite brass brush and just buff the surface. Oh. 
Okay, so that was the copper side and that is now the silver side. So you can see how quickly that works. And as I said in the beginning, it's wonderful to use for replacing plating because you can put it just specifically where you want it to go. So let's go back here and let's take a look and see what we've got. Looks like we need a little more over here. I'm gonna put this back in. And if you do not have everything clean, you're just gonna see where the plating is not gonna to wanna to, uh, stick. You're gonna have areas that uh, are not gonna, uh, they're not gonna develop the silk. Now color. frequently you'll see bubbling. So that goes back to how to know the difference between your positive and your negative. So your piece that you're plating oftentimes will bubble. And a lot of that depends on the voltage of your, uh, your adapter and the size of your anode. So I'll just give you an idea. I'm gonna attach this now. You can see the bubbling there. Now it looks like I probably have a dirty spot there because that area is not plating. So as well as I scrubbed that up, I'm still, you know, I'm still having a little bit of an issue getting some, some color in a couple of those areas. So what I can do is, uh, you know, clean it up again and then put it back in and plate it some more. Be sure to unplug your adapter when not in use. So I'm just gonna rinse this off for the moment and dry it. Just want to give you a look at what happens. So we have our silver on there now. And so my favorite brass brush, I'm just going to go and buff this to a nice shine. Now, because the plating is thin, it's going to wear off quicker than commercial plating. Commercial plating uh, uses much stronger chemicals than we have available to us um, and much better equipment they have available to them. I went back in and cleaned this up some more and then added some more plating to it. So you can see how absolutely gorgeous this becomes absolutely gorgeous this becomes when it is plated so if you want to protect the plating you want to keep the plating intact uh, you want to keep it from wearing off and this goes for any uh, any of your uh, silver plated pieces uh, i don't recommend this on sterling but on any of your silver plated pieces you can always put protect -to clear on it and protect -a clear and that is the website address there. You can also buy this on Amazon. So let me just show you real quick how we do this. So I'm just gonna add some to this container and I have a little hook that I made here out of copper. I'm going to grab that, put that in, in the dip, and I'm going to grab it out. Now I'm going to allow it to drip, and 
we've got a paper towel ready. I'm just going to hang it from this little hook on one of my uh, tool boards. And just let that, just let that drip. In about 20 minutes, you want to be sure that you dip it again. It's best to dip it three or four times. You can also put it in the oven at a, a low 225 for about 20 minutes to bake it onto the surface. And that will make it uh, even more durable. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Just post them below. If you're happy with our tutorials, please subscribe so you can view all of the new information as it becomes available. I've sped up this section to save on time. If you would like to watch it in real time, you can click the settings button below the video and slow it down. So what I have here is a five volt adapter. Adapters are really easy to get a hold of. A lot of people have them, you know, when the equipment breaks down and you throw it away and you keep the adapter, run down to the thrift store. Usually they have uh, junk bins. You can find an adapter pretty easily. You can always get one off of Amazon if necessary. So I'm stripping the uh, insulation off the last couple of inches of wire on each side, each wire here. Um, at this point, we don't know what the positive side and the negative side is, as there's no indication uh, on the wires itself, uh, which would normally, you'd be able to tell negative and positive by the color of the wires. But in this case, the wires are both black. Um, we would be able to determine the negative and positive. Uh, when we put our pieces in solution, so when you have your pieces clipped together, uh, the piece, the, uh, the clip that gets silver plated is going to be your positive. And the other one is going to be your negative. And that's the one that's going to hold your anode, which in the case of the video, we're using a coin that is 999 silver. So I'm just uh, soldering real quick. Uh, very, very quick, very easy, um, even if you've never soldered before. If in a pinch you don't have soldering equipment, you absolutely just cannot do it, uh, you can just apply the uh, wires as shown. Just want to have a good connection between the wires and the clip, and then just tape everything in place. Soldering is going to be the best way. And this is done just with a regular soldering iron. So once everything is soldered, then I am going to get a couple of strips of uh, Gorilla Tape. I didn't have any electrical tape on hand. So I'm just using the Gorilla Tape. The clips get corroded over time, uh, being in the solution. So they will have to be replaced occasionally. So what I've done here is just a really super simple, down and dirty way of attaching clips to um, an adapter. Very easy to do. And that's it.